Good morning, my friends. Brian King, the Mindset King here, coming to you live and in person in many cases. Uh, the question I'm going to ask, answer for you this morning was from one of my clients in my client group. She asked me, what are my strategies for staying focused and on track? And of course, the minutia, the specifics of that are going to be different for everybody. But what I want to do is walk you through what I do, at least today, to give you a sense of how I organize myself. Because I make no bones about the fact that I'm a scatterbrain. You know, I have ADHD, I have dyslexia, the, the MS messes with my focus and can often leave me foggy. And I have all of those things that can potentially sabotage my focus and my ability to stay on track. But that doesn't stop me because we live in an era of tremendous resources that can help us compensate or work around these various obstacles, challenges, whatever you want to call them. So let's start by defining what a strategy is so that we're on the same page here. A strategy is simply an organized way of using your resources. Right now, I'm using a webcam, a computer, internet access, my ability to speak clearly, my three years worth of knowledge in terms of personal development. All of those are resources that I'm using to bring this to you. And I'm using them in an organized way to present this message. As far as my brain lapse here, staying on track, everything begins with a goal, it has to. I mean, even the word track, if you are on a train, on a track, you gotta know where you're going or you're gonna end up at a random stop and not know why you're there or what to do. So staying on track assumes that you're going somewhere and that you have some sense of where you're going. So it's got to start with goals. Now, a goal could be something, and I highly recommend it, a goal for today, a goal for this week, for this month. Break it down as much as you need to. Now, I often have to have a goal for specific time periods of the day. In other words, the morning routine, for example. Do you meditate, exercise, read, all of the above? Maybe that takes you an hour to do every morning. So you have those short-term goals just for that morning routine. What are you going to read? How long are you going to meditate? What exercises are you going to do? And that's just the first hour of the day. Not overwhelming you here, okay? Because once these things become habit and second nature, you're not sweating how complex it may seem because you're used to doing it. So you have the morning routine. Part of my morning routine is medications and lots of them. So I use Google Calendar and my iPhone because these things are digital, they're easy, they're portable. They also have alerts on them, which interrupt whatever my scatterbrain may be chasing in that moment. My phone buzzes, I hear a ding on my computer that alerts me and says, hey, Bri, you wanted me to remind you that you have a priority right now. Take your medication so you don't hurt all day. And today is one of those days where I need to inject myself. I inject myself three times a week with an MS med that prevents me from having relapses. Expensive, awesome, helpful. And it's refrigerated. So I have a reminder to take it out of the fridge so I can warm up to room temperature. Then I have a second reminder telling me to inject the thing because in that time frame, I can get scattered and carried away with something. So those reminders of my goals, take your medicine, take it on time, take it these days of the week. Those, that strategy of putting reminders on those resources, you follow me here? An organized use of resources is a strategy, okay? So I'm using the resources of Google Calendar, created by the Google Corporation, the internet, which gives me access to it, my iPhone, the reminders. I'm using all of those resources to remind me that this is what I need to do to maintain my health on a daily basis, okay? Reminds me to practice self-care. There's Ruby in the background, <laughs> one of my kitties. And then there is taking care of my clients. I have a client appointment in about 20 minutes from now. 
and I have a reminder of who it is, how we're meeting, we're meeting on Zoom, which is how I'm talking to you now, and sometimes I make notes about what we've talked about last time to remind me. I use a program called Evernote for that. And as far as you know, a certain sequence of questions I like to ask certain clients, I have a second program called Wonderlist. It's a list making app program that I can access through my phone or my browser that reminds me the sequence of activities. Like what am I gonna do with this after I've recorded it for you? Well, I have a series of steps that I follow every time. I'm going to take the video of this and the transcript of it and give it to the clients within my group because the program I'm using automatically transcribes it for me and as a bonus to my clients, I give them the transcript as well. I'm also gonna put this video on YouTube, share it on Twitter, LinkedIn. I have a list that reminds me to do all those things because the more steps there are, the more likely I am to forget something. So I use that strategy to make sure that I proceed in an organized way to accomplish all that. Because if I had to keep it all in my head, not only would I forget stuff, but I would overwhelm myself with the complexity of all those things and I'd wear myself out. And for a scatterbrain or any brain, the more hoops it has to jump through in the course of a day, the less it's going to have energy and endurance for the long run. There's a reason why some of the busiest people on the planet, one of the present ones is Mark Zuckerberg in the past, Thomas Edison, wore the same outfit every day because it's one less decision to make. Save that mental energy for something useful. And as far as staying focused, well, one of the big keys to that is eliminating distractions. What's the source of shiny objects that you chase every day? You know, do you have a lot of alerts that pop up telling you about the latest Kardashian story or the latest headline that's honestly not going anywhere? You can find out about it later in the day. Then turn those things off. You don't need those distractions. You need to stay focused on the things that are time sensitive, like taking your medication on time, meeting with a client. Those time sensitive things require your attention first. Things that are not urgent, like breaking news or whatever, unless that's your job, those things can wait till later. So those are just kind of some tidbits. This has been a longer video than usual. Those are some nuggets to help you wrap your mind around what are some of the characteristics of focus, being on track, some of the things you need to consider in order to help you do that, and most importantly, the understanding of the mechanics of a strategy, because I don't know that a lot of people really understand what it means and what goes into it. And of course, this is just the beginning of the conversation. This video is not the entirety of the subject, of course. So, Ask me questions in the comment thread here. Tell me what's been useful. Tell me what you would like me to expand upon. And I will go into detail for you to help you make better use of this. And if there is somebody else you know that can benefit from this as well, please share it with them. And until next time, this has been Brian. Thanks for being you.